Hi, my name is Liz and this is the Pink Lookbook. Let's talk about Louis Vuitton bags today. You may love them or hate them, but it is a fact that they are some of the most popular bags at the moment. The reason for this video is that I have seen quite a few videos by influencers talking about the quality of the leather of these bags. Well, I have to disappoint them. The most iconic or most famous material by Louis Vuitton is actually not leather. And there's a historic reason for that, which I'm going to discuss in this video today. Louis Vuitton today is mainly famous for their bags, but their heritage actually goes back to trunk making. And it all started with the young Louis Vuitton moving to Paris in 1837. Moving is actually not the correct term. He actually walked on foot over 400 kilometers from Eastern France to Paris to work for the famous Monsieur Maréchal. He was a packer and box manufacturer and this closely relates to the way people traveled at the time. People traveled by horse-drawn carriages, later on by trains and steamboats and they didn't really have suitcases or bags the way we know them today. So they just took their belongings and they had to pack them efficiently but also safely because they were handled quite roughly. Louis Vuitton started his training with Monsieur Maréchal, but then he was hired by Empress Eugenie, who was the wife of Napoleon Bonaparte III, and this allowed him access to the Parisian upper class, and he soon opened his own store in 1854, and the sign outside actually said that he was specializing in packing. And this is also where Louis Vuitton developed a very special trunk, which was flat, stackable, and waterproof. He was not the only one experimenting with trunks, because traveling became such a big industry it became more and more important but he was also an important player who shaped the industry he grew his business from there and he actually worked as a trunk maker until his death in 1892. I already mentioned how people traveled in the 19th century and when you traveled with a horse-drawn carriage or on a train it was not always possible to guard your luggage. So people had to protect the luggage and because of this uh, Louis Vuitton's son Georges came up with a special lock which the company still uses until today. It's the special tumbler lock and Georges claimed that this lock was unpickable and he actually dared the famous escape artist Houdini to lock himself into one of the big Louis Vuitton trunks and try to escape. Houdini never really took up the offer, but the lock became very, very famous already long before the iconic materials and patterns of the company. And another very famous characteristic of Louis Vuitton was also born out of a necessity. In addition to these burglaries, counterfeit products were also a big challenge for the brand. So Georges came up with this very special monogram pattern involving the logo, the quatre foil, the circle and the flower. And this was meant to protect the trunks and later up bags from copies. And now I'm coming to this part that I mentioned in the introduction. A lot of people talk about the leather of the bags and you may mistake it for leather because of this pebbled structure and because of the feel but actually as the name suggests monogram canvas is not a leather it's a canvas and today it is PVC coated canvas and this goes back to the trunks that started out the whole Louis Vuitton business. Now these first trunks uh, were kept in a solid gray tone and they were made of a hemp oil fabric, which meant that they were much lighter than competitors' products. Many competitors still used leather. And as I mentioned before, counterfeit products were already a challenge. So these trunks and the style of these trunks had to evolve over time. In 1872, the company came up with a red and white stripe design, but it was also easily copied. So in 1876, they came up with another stripe design, which was already held in the signature brown and cream color tones of Louis Vuitton, and this was called the Rayé pattern. But again, the striped pattern was not enough to protect the product, so the company came up with another pattern in 1888, it's the now iconic damier pattern. Damier means checkerboard in French, and this is exactly what it is. And in some of the squares, they hand painted El Vuitton Déposé, which was the first registered trademark of the brand. So this was another move to protect them against counterfeit products. And this damier pattern was first released in red and white, but then soon it was released in the signature color scheme of brown and beige. And more than 100 years later, in 1998, the company reissued the damier. It was called Damier Eben, and it was printed on black canvas. And this brings me back to the point. We are still not talking about leather here. We are talking about the coated canvas, 
which then also evolved into the damier and later on in the monogram canvas. And since then Louis Vuitton has reissued the pattern and played with the pattern many times. One example here is the damier azur which they started in 2006. So it is a cream and blue color scheme take on the damier pattern. And further interpretations of this damier pattern were for example the damier graphite, the cobalt or the carbon. And the latter was actually a collaboration with BMW for their i8 series. Now let's move on to the most famous pattern, the monogram canvas. And these symbols that I have mentioned before actually have to be in a certain pattern. The reason is again this uh, fight against counterfeit products. And some experts assume that Georges Vuitton was actually inspired by Japan when he created this pattern. I think they may have a point because at the time Japan had a very strong influence on European artists and fashion designers, especially after 1867, after the Paris Expo, everybody was obsessed with uh, Japan. For example, the Art Deco in France was influenced by it, but also the Viennese Jugendstil. So I think this could also be an influence on this iconic Louis Vuitton pattern. And it is actually a bit ironic, Georges Vuitton created this monogram canvas to protect his company from counterfeit products and today the Louis Vuitton pattern is probably one of the most copied in the world and it's sometimes really funny. I recently walked by a barber shop and I saw the client sit there with capes with the fake Louis Vuitton monogram canvas and I'm sure you have also seen many funny interpretations of this Louis Vuitton pattern. Also the monogram canvas has been reinterpreted many many times. One example is this 2007 limited edition where the canvas actually slightly changes the color. And probably the most iconic interpretation of the monogram canvas is this one from the early 2000s, the multicolor monogram canvas, which was created in collaboration with the Japanese artist Takashi Murakami, who created quite a few interpretations of the monogram canvas. And coming back to this whole discussion about Louis Vuitton materials, like the damier, also the monogram canvas, is a PVC coated canvas. Now it is a very personal decision if you then want to buy this. It is not a leather bag and most people associate luxury goods with leather. Some people argue that they pay the Louis Vuitton price point because of this heritage and that it's more durable or resistant because of the special material that Louis Vuitton came up with. I leave this up to you to judge if you want to spend the price point or not for a bag which is actually not made from leather. But when we talk about materials and especially leather, needless to say there are also materials within the Louis Vuitton range using leather and probably one of the most famous examples is the AP leather. I have quite a heavy example here so I'm just going to show you that briefly. This leather is actually embossed with this wavy pattern and then there's a top coat to achieve this three-dimensional effect and this is probably one of the more reduced styles by Louis Vuitton because the logo itself is only visible in one corner. Needless to say if you carry a Louis Vuitton bag with the AP leather most people will also recognize it as Louis Vuitton because also this material now is quite famous. The AP leather was initially launched in six colors then uh, there were further colors added and some were dropped and it was also reinterpreted quite a few times. For example, there was the AP plage or the AP leather was also used for the collaboration with Supreme. Another Louis Vuitton leather which I would like to show you is the Tiger leather. It is named after the biggest forest in Russia and this is actually a leather which is sanded down to get rid of imperfections, then it's buffed up again and then the signature grain is imprinted on it. Uh, this leather is mainly used for men's accessories, for example briefcases. And not every product with the monogram on it is only made from the canvas. There are also leather products, for example the vernis. Vernis means varnish in French and this refers to this shiny surface of uh, the products. The monogram vernis was created in 1998 under Marc Jacobs and initially it was launched in pastel colors. But soon the company also issued further colors like this beautiful bright red here. And some people criticize the vernis line for being not as long lasting and difficult to take care of. But I have to say the two uh, examples that I showed you are from the early and the mid 2000s and I think they still look quite nice. So I think with the right care they can still look quite beautiful after some time. These are probably the most known materials and patterns by Louis Vuitton. Further examples would be the Suhali leather, which is a rare goatskin leather, the denim interpretation of the monogram canvas, 
or also the Mahina. Another example would be the Mini Lin, which was basically a reduced version of the monogram canvas on a blend of cotton, linen and polyamide. It was later reissued under the name Idil, but they don't produce it anymore. And the last example that I would like to show you is the empreinte, because this is an example that we see quite often now. It's leather embossed with the Louis Vuitton monogram. And this is the end of my brief guide about Louis Vuitton materials. And now I'm curious about your opinion. Do you think it's justified to spend that much money for Louis Vuitton bags? Or do you think their prices are just outrageous, given that most of their products are not leather? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my website, The Pink Lookbook, for more fashion-related articles. And please visit my fashion label, Pelagona. And if you like this video, I'm sure you would enjoy watching my video where I discuss iconic bags and their celebrity godmothers. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you soon.